What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you guys how to create the Stranger Things logo but apply your name or whatever name to it in Adobe Illustrator. So just a little heads up, this is the font that I'll be using in today's video. It's called Bangat. This is actually an Adobe font so if you have an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription you can download the font to your Adobe apps or if you want you can download a TTF file or OTF file to your computer however you want to do it but this is the font that I'll be using in my video today so let's get started so as you can see in Illustrator I provided a gray to a black gradient that's the background we won't be messing with that today but when you look at the Stranger Things logo it's red text on a black background so that's why the background is this color or this gradient specifically but like I said we'll be using the bang gap fonts in this video so the first thing that I'm gonna do is create a text box by going to my text tool and then clicking and dragging to create a text box. All right, and then up here in my character window, I have an option here to change my font. So I'm gonna click here and then I'm gonna search Bangat. I'm gonna use the bold variation of this font. Now after selecting that font, I can go back to my text box and I'm gonna use all caps and type in my screen name, Cadillac and cartoons and I'm gonna highlight all that text so I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut command A to select all of them all right and then I'm gonna go to my color option over here in the corner and I'm gonna select just the basic red color all right and then going back to my character window I'm gonna make that text very big like so I'll make that a little bigger There we go. I'm gonna make sure this is all aligned to the center. And there we go. So now we should have our text with the Stranger Things font. But before we continue, let's look back at the Stranger Things logo real quick. So as you can see, the letter S and the letter R, the first and last letters of the word stranger, those two letters are bigger than the other text. So now what I'm gonna do is take the first and last letter of this first word, which is Cadillac. They're both letter C's. I'm gonna take those and I'm gonna resize those. So that way they're a little bit bigger than these letters that are in between the two, right? I can do that by using my touch type tool. So I'm gonna click on my text box and then I'm gonna go over here to my text tool. I'm gonna click and hold on that and then I should have the touch type tool. Or if for some reason that's not showing up on Illustrator, you can use the keyboard shortcut shift and the letter T. Or if you prefer to have the tool right here where these other tools are, I'm gonna show you how to get it real quick. So on your tools panel, if you go all the way to the bottom where these three dots are, there should be a lot of other Illustrator tools right here. And if we go over here to where it says type, the touch type tool would look like this. Like the letter T, with like a little uh, transform box surrounding it. So that's the touch type tool. You can click and drag that to where your type tool is to nest it with that. And that way the touch type tool will appear right here. So I'm gonna click on that. Let me get out of here real quick. And what we're gonna do with this touch type tool is take these two letter C's and the word Cadillac and I'm gonna scale those up a little bit so that way they're a little bit bigger than these letters that are in between these two letter C's. Now with my touch type tool, I'm gonna click on this letter C here. All right, and then I'm gonna click on this transform point that's at the upper right hand corner. I'm gonna hold the shift key. And what I'm gonna do is scale that up. Like so. And then with this transform tool still selected, I'm now gonna shift this C, shift the baseline of it actually, so that way it still touches the top of this text box here. But what if I wanna apply those same exact settings to this other letter C that's all the way over here, right? So whenever I do anything with any piece of text with the touch type tool, all the settings number wise would be in my character window. So I'm gonna click here, 
the same window you would go to if you were to change the text or the size or the tracking or the kerning of your text. That's the exact same window. So as you saw me do, I changed the baseline of it. So I shifted this letter C down a bit. I shifted the baseline of it. And what I also did was I changed the scale of it horizontally and vertically. That's what these two toolbars are right here. And like I just said, I use the shift key to do that. So that way these numbers will be the same. In the box that's below it, that's the baseline shift. That's a specific number. And I did have the option to rotate that letter specifically, but I didn't do that. So that's why that number is still at zero. So what I can do to apply those same settings to the other letter C here is I'm gonna take note of these numbers here. So horizontal and vertical shift, they're the same number. So I'm gonna write those down. It's uh, 148.7826. Is there any other number? It's just a percentage, so that's good. Okay, so in this case, it's 148.7826. And now let's take note of the baseline. It's a negative number, so negative 51.7834. Point seven eight three four. All right, so now I have those numbers written down. And now with my touch type tool again, I'm gonna click on this other letter C here. Go back to my character window. And now I'm gonna apply those same numbers that I just wrote down to both my vertical scale and my horizontal scale. In my case, those numbers are the same. You have the option to make those different, but I'm not going to. But in my case, those two numbers are the same and I have them written down. So now I'm just gonna type those numbers into those boxes. So 148, 7826. And as you can see, that letter C vertically scaled to that number that we gave it. Now let's do that horizontally because this letter C that we just manipulated, it's now wide. So we wanna make this other letter C wide as well. So I'm gonna go back to my character window and then apply that same number. So 1487826. And you can see that that letter C is now just as wide as the other one. Well, this character window is blocking this other letter C, so you kind of sort of can't see it. But now we have one more number to change, and that's the baseline shift. So I'm going to go to this number zero and change that to negative 51.7834. All right. So after applying those same settings to this other letter C, I'm now going to make this text box a little bit bigger with my selection tool. And now you can see that it's looking a little bit like the Stranger Things logo, right? So now what I'm gonna do is take the text that's underneath it, that's on a separate line, which is cartoons. And what I'm gonna do is change the size of this text so that way it's directly under the letters that are in between our two letter C's here. So I'm gonna highlight the word cartoons, go back to character, and simply change the size of it like so. And then if you need to, you can shift the baseline. So we can move that up if we want or move it back down. So in my case, I'm gonna move that up. Like so. And now this is looking a lot like the Stranger Things logo. But now if you take a look back at the Stranger Things logo, you can see that we have lines that go along the top of these letters and a couple lines that are underneath the letter C. It's kind of like an underline, you know? So we can easily do that with our rectangle tool. So let's go to our shape tool over here. Rectangle tool is already selected. So what I'm gonna do now is create a skinny rectangle. Like so. And then I'm gonna shift that down a bit. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is make another rectangle that's underneath this letter C and underneath this letter C. So what I'm gonna do is hold the Option key or Alt if you're on a Windows key. Hold the Shift key to keep it aligned. And now we have another rectangle that appears to be the same width as the one that we just created. So now if I zoom in really closely, 
what we'll be messing with is this middle anchor point. We're gonna make that go all the way over here. So that way it's underneath the letter C specifically, the big letter C that we made. Like so. And now we're gonna duplicate this specific rectangle so we won't have to duplicate this one and resize it again, you know? All right, so I'm gonna click on this newly made rectangle. Hold the Option or Alt key if you're on a Windows again. Hold the Shift key to keep it aligned. And then align it with the top rectangle like so. But if you were to look up Stranger Things logo, you can see that there's another variation of the Stranger Things logo that consists of just an outline, right? So what I'm gonna do is create a copy of all three of these rectangles and the text box. So I'm gonna click and drag. I'm gonna shift this up a bit. And then holding the Option key again, or Alt if you're on a Windows. And I'm just gonna make a copy of what we just created, like all that, all right? And now up here in my color fill and stroke options, what I'm gonna do is take this red off. So there's gonna be no fill to the text and the rectangles. So I'm gonna click here and select none. All right, and as you can see, we have absolutely nothing. It's as if nothing was duplicated, but everything just has a no fill and no stroke. So it's pretty much invisible for now, but we have to add a stroke to everything. So in the color option that's right next to it, I'm gonna click this box here and select that same red. So click on that. And you can now see that a stroke applied to the text, but since the rectangles are still selected, we can't really see the stroke on it just yet. But we can also adjust the stroke weight of all this text and the rectangles. So I'm gonna adjust that to about two, so that way you can possibly see the rectangles while they're still selected. But that should be it. So I'm gonna click away from all that. And you can now see that we have another variation of the Stranger Things logo with just outlines. And yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you create the Stranger Things logo from scratch in Adobe Illustrator. But just a little reminder, the font name that I used in this video is called Bangat. This is an Adobe font, so if you were to go to the Adobe website, you can download this directly to your Adobe apps and go from there. But you do also have the option to download this as an OTF or TTF file to your computer and also go from there. But bottom line is, that's how you create your name or your screen name in the Stranger Things style. So if you liked the video or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I